Welcome back guys. In this video, we'll be learning how does canvas path works and how to draw various shapes like circle and rectangle. Okay, then let's get started with this. So now if you recollect guys, last time we created something like this. So we saw how line two and move to work, but we saw one problem that if I try to change the stroke style at any point of time, so initially it was red for these two lines and then I wanted it to become blue for this particular line, but it was affecting all the lines. Why? Because by default in canvas, everything that you draw is in a single path. So what is a path? So consider a path like a container. So every shape that you draw is inside a container and whatever styling you provide like stroke style or line width or in future fill style, everything will be applied onto that container. So right now, all of this is inside one container. So whatever you apply will basically override the old one and it will not apply red to these two or blue to this one because all of them are inside one container and this blue is overriding this red and everyone is getting blue because all of them are inside one path or one container. So in this case, what we have to do is we have to divide this into two different paths. So I have to tell canvas that consider these things in a different path and then this thing in a different path. So I have to create two containers. So what can we do here is we can go here and we can say ctx dot begin path. So here I'm starting a new path, which is the initial path. Even if you don't put it there, it's fine because by default a path starts. And then here I'm going to tell I am starting a new path. So that's how it is. Now every path should have its own stroke. So right now this stroke will only work for this path. So now whatever you're writing after that path will only work for that path. All of these things will not work for the older path now. So for the older path, you also have to give a stroke. And now you'll see I'll have two different colors. This is red and this is blue. So basically first I start a path, then I move somewhere. I say my stroke style line width and then two lines and then stroke. So I get this and then again, I begin a new path. I move somewhere stroke style blue and then I draw a line. Now, if you can see my line width is still continuing to the next path. So if you don't override this, it will continue to the next path. Any styling that you don't override, it will always continue to the next path. But the best part about path is now if you want, you can override it for the next path. So I can just go and write ctx dot line width and I can say 10. So now this 10 will be applied to the current path and also whatever path comes afterwards if you're not overriding it. So that's how basically the path logic works. So by default, everything is inside a single path. Okay, but if you want, you can divide it by putting begin path, then write whatever you want. Then if you don't want any older thing to get applied on the next one, begin a new path and you can give the, your own stylings there. But remember that whatever styling you provide to the older path will be applied to the next path, but you can change it now. Initially, you can see we were unable to change it. Whatever we tried, it was basically also getting applied to everything. So now that's not happening because this is only getting applied to this path and this is only getting applied to this path, but also to the next one. But now we can override it. So that's how the path logic works. Whatever styling you apply to a path, it will be applied to that path and also the other one, but you can change it. So now by this guys, let's move ahead and let's see how to draw a rectangle and circle in canvas. So let's comment these things out and let's start. Now we'll always go ahead with the path because that's the best thing. So ctx dot begin path. Every time I'm doing something, I can just do it and then I can move somewhere. So ctx dot move to, let's say I move to hundred comma hundred. And now there I want to draw a rectangle. So ctx dot fill rect is a function in which you can pass first the X and Y coordinate. So let's say I want to start at 100 comma 100 and then you can pass the width and the height. So you can say width 200, height 300, whatever you want. And let's see. And here we go. You can see a black rectangle from here. This is the pointer. That is the X, Y coordinate. This is it. And from there, width 200 and height 300. So that's how you can simply draw a rectangle. If you want, you can also change the color of this rectangle by doing ctx dot fill style. Now remember there are two things, stroke style, fill style. 
Stroke style always work with lines and borders. Fill style works with the internal area. So I can say fill style and I can change it to red and you will see we fill it with red. So that's how fill style works. And we also have a rect. Like for example, if you don't want to make a filled rectangle, if you only want to make a simple bordered rectangle, you also have a function called as rect only. So ctx dot rect and let's try again same point 100 comma 100 and again 200 is the width and 300 is the height. And I cannot see anything because you're drawing a bordered based thing. So always stroke it. Whenever you draw a border based thing, always stroke it line based or border based so stroke. And here we go. You can see it now. So that's how it works. So you have rect and fill rect. You can use fill rect to draw a fill rectangle and rect to draw a border based rectangle. Now let's move ahead and let's see how to draw a circle. So again, I'll begin a new path so that the old one doesn't affect it. Now old one will definitely affect it, but you can now change it at least. Don't worry guys, at the end, I'll also give you a summary about path if you're getting confused in this. First of all, let's see how to draw a circle. So again, let's move somewhere. So move to, let's say I move in here, somewhere around here. So let's say I move to on X 700 and on Y 250. And there I want to draw my circle. So to draw a circle, you simply have CTX dot arc. Now you have to focus in it because it has a lot of parameters. So the first parameter is X and Y. So I want to draw that at that class only. So 700, 250. This will become the origin of the circle, the center of the circle. Comma, first thing you pass is the radius. So let's say radius of 30. Then you pass the start angle. That's going to be zero. And then end angle. That can be in this case. Don't worry, I'll explain you this. Math dot pi multiplied by 2. And finally, do you want it to draw it like counterclockwise or clockwise? So I can simply say true counterclockwise. And don't forget CTX dot stroke. Now let's see, do we have a circle? And here we go, you can see a circle. But to understand like why this line is coming and everything, let me explain you how actually the circle works. So for that, let's take a pen. Now focus guys, zero is always at the right side. So let's say you come at this point. Let me take a different color. Let's say you come at this point and you want to draw a circle. So zero is always this. So let's say this is the origin. That is basically our 700, 250. That is the origin and radius is 30, right? So this is my origin. So from there at a radius of 30, this is basically your zero angle, start angle. That is zero. Okay. Always it should go like this. This is, you can consider it as your 0 0.5 pi. And then this becomes your 1 pi. And then this becomes your 1.5 pi. And if you come back here, this is your 2 pi. So this is your end angle. So start angle is also this, end angle is also this. Now, if you don't know about pi guys, what is the value of pi? Pi's value is nothing but 180. So this is half pi. That is 90. That's why from zero, you can consider 0.5 pi as 90. Consider this one pi as 180. Consider this as what is the next one? I think it's 270, right? And after that, two pi is nothing but 360, right? Because pi's value is 180 in maths. So we, right now we are considering pi because we are talking about angles in radians, but you can also consider it in degrees because pi's value is 180. So this is zero pi. This is half pi. This is 1 pi, 1.5 pi and 2 pi. So that's how you complete a circle. That's how simple it is, guys. And that's how this circle is being made. But I think I'm going counterclockwise. So I'm going in reverse order. So I can make it false. Okay, let me just remove all of this first. So let's delete and let's see. So now that extra line will not be there as well. And here we go. Okay, it's still there. Have I saved it or not? Okay, it's because of the path. Yes, that's it. Because it's starting from here. So first of all, let me increase the size of the circle. So increase the radius to let's say 50. Now see guys what's happening. We 
start a path and then we draw the arc so after path we are moving first we begin the path and then we move and from there it is starting to draw a circle because of the path so what i can do is i can say first move okay i can say wait i did something yep first move and then i'll begin the path and now let's see and if we go you can see that thing is gone so that's how you can do first move to that place and then begin the path and then start drawing the circle otherwise it will just create an extra line in here so that's how you can simply draw a circle now if you want you can also fill it for that you can you just have to call ctx dot fill not fill style just call fill and that should be it now why it is filling with red because in the older path you have set fill style to red but the best part is because you're in a new path you can change it ctx dot fill style equals simply whatever you want so in this case i can say green so you can change it so guys that's how it is so let's just do a quick revision a path in canvas can be considered as a container if you don't put a path everything every shape every element that you create is inside a single path so initially if you give red and after some time if you give blue everything becomes blue because all of them are in a container so it overrides it but everything changes so after that what you can do is you can put different different paths okay so this path is having these many shapes this path is having these many shapes okay and after that you can give different different colors to different different path different different styles and one style that you give to any path that style gets applied to that part and also on to the other part what on to the other path that is after that but if you want to stop it you can change it at any point of time because that swat path allows you to do it so that's it guys so now you know how to create lines how to create rectangles and how to create circles and how to also put text in the canvas now in the next video we can start making charts so i'm really excited i hope you guys are excited as well so that's it from this video guys thank you so much for watching it please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next video thank you so much guys bye bye